The North Carolina men's and women's teams are both headed to the 2022 Sweet 16. What's it like to live those experiences? There's no way better to figure it out than to talk to somebody who's lived it. So today we're joined on the show by 2005 national champion, Jesse Holly, who's going to help us think through what it's like to live those experiences. Jesse is here with us today on this episode of Locked on Tar Heels. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Thursday, March 24th, 2022. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Isaac Shade, beat writer for Sports Illustrated's North Carolina site. And I want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen, or if you're watching, your first watch every single day. Don't forget that we are free and available wherever it is that you find podcasts. And new to the show, welcome. You have picked a great day to be here. Why? Because we've got national champion Jesse Holly joining us. But before we get to that, I want to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, let's get right to it. Let's dive right in to our conversation with Jesse Holly. All right, we are here today with Jesse Holly, who played football at Carolina and basketball at Carolina, was part of Coach Williams' first two teams. And so uh, we got a whole bunch of football stuff to unpack another day. But today, talking to Jesse, we are going to focus on and talk a lot about basketball. And so, Jesse, welcome. So great to have you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is the best time of the year to talk. <laughs> uh, basketball, the NCAA tournament. It's it's where it's where the madness happens. Amen to that. And you and I both got to experience some of that madness this weekend in Fort Worth. We're going to talk about that today. Before we get to that, though, I'd, I'd love for you to be able to unpack for people. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your time at Chapel Hill. Oh man, um, quick funny story. Before I even got to Chapel Hill, um, you know, at the time. Uh, Holly touted out of high school, was an All-American in two sports, and and uh, had an opportunity to kind of pick and choose where I wanted to go to school at. And I actually made North Carolina my last official visit um, because I thought at the, by that time I would have picked another school and never would have went to North Carolina. Uh, so I had, I had an official visit to Ohio State, to Michigan State, uh, to Virginia, and I was like, man, by the time I get to North Carolina – I would already have my decision made and I won't have to go, but, but thanks be to my grandmother who was a person who was about honoring your word. And, and so she was all about, if you told those people uh, you were going to go, then you're going, whether you go to school there or not, you are going. And I ended up going and um, it was literally the best visit of any visit, unofficial official that I took. And it felt like home. And from the time that I, I, I touched uh, I touched down, it was, I, I don't think it's a violation now. I can say it now. But it was like I flew in on a private jet. You know, I was like uh, at a Teterboro Airport, New Jersey, and I landed in this private jet. And uh, they were like right on the tarmac to pick me up. And I remember it was wintertime. And I took off my jacket. They took my jacket off of me and put like a, a, a black Letterman jacket on, a black leather Letterman jacket with the big NC emblem on. And I was just like, what? And it was just great. And um, I had breakfast with Dean Smith. Um, uh, you know, it was, I talked to Julius Peppers on my visit, Ronald Curry on my visit, because I was a two-sport athlete like, like they were. And it was, it was amazing. It, it was amazing. And I was like, this is where I'm going. Like, this is where, I, this is where I'm supposed to be. And it was important for me, because being raised by my grandmother, she was always like, hey, go to whatever school you want to go to, but just know if you go too far, we'll never be able to see you. Uh, because my first choice was to go to UCLA. That was my first choice, was to go to UCLA long before the recruiting process got started. And she was all for it. She just goes, she goes, just know we cannot afford to go to fly California and your games will not be on TV all the time. So uh, North Carolina becoming home to me was something where she – could still drive down uh, and, and see me, you know, uh, for home games and for visits and stuff like that. And 
and that that was the start of of me coming to Carolina was I wasn't even gonna go and then once I got there I was like this is the place uh, for me. Man, what a great! I feel like I've heard that story so many times of people just falling in love with the, with Chapel Hill, with that place, and uh, how cool that it became part of your story. And uh, that's funny about you. UCLA, we're going to have to unpack that a little bit with the two teams squaring off this no, right. weekend. <laughs> so, uh, Jesse, you graduated from Carolina in 2007. What's been there happening from there. then there until now? Like, like when you say that, say that again. I, I, this just sounds good. You know, we don't we don't get enough athletes that, that people praise that part about it enough. And it was like, it, yes, it was a graduate graduated in four years from the University of North Carolina, and it wasn't just some fluff degree it was a real degree it was it was i i graduated with a degree in communications it's it's real it's it's legit and uh and, and and so i like i like when people talk about athletes graduating hmm. uh, yes absolutely what what an important thing uh in fact uh, i i mentioned you i was talking to leaky black's mom yesterday who was a principal and educator uh, you see that in how uh, what an athlete a uh, student athlete is the first word there that leaky is as well and so thank you for that jesse what a great example yeah absolutely you know and in, in some football circles <laughs> you would have coaches that I always go they'll say uh they'll say uh, school is first football is second and then they'll just look at you. You know, sometimes people go like, what? And, and the coaches will go, school is first, football is second. So you got to just make sure that that's taken care of. <laughs> Actions speak louder than words, literally, yeah. in that sense. <laughs> that's yeah. great. Well, so Jesse, you did graduate. And then take us uh, just through your life a little bit of what's been happening since 2007. Man, you talk about a roller coaster ride. Uh, but one I would not take back at all. Uh Graduated in, in 07 and, and, and went on to to the NFL. Um, got a chance to play with the Bengals. Uh, I was on their practice squad for like nine, ten weeks, and then I got released. And the crazy part about it was that was the first time in my life since I started sports where technically nobody wanted me. All right? Mm -hmm. It was like from Little League to Pop Warner to middle school to high school to college, everyone wanted Jesse Holly on their team. And when I got released from the Bengals, it was it was an eye opening experience because I had never I, I hadn't experienced that before. I haven't experienced being cut or not wanted. And I had so much of who I was, my identity kind of in sports that when it got taken away from me, I was in such a bad place. Like I was like lost. Um, I ended up like losing everything, um, whatever money that I had made at that time I spent uh, and I ended up living on a friend's. Uh, futon in in uh, in Durham, in Durham, North Carolina. I, I tucked my tail. I left Cincinnati and came on back to Durham, and I was living on the French futon. And at that time, we we kind of went into that first recession, you know, uh, of of my of my lifetime, um, where you couldn't get jobs. You know, it was like to get a job at like the partner store. It was like, yeah, you have a college degree, you're overqualified. I was like, wait, what? It was like you guys only pay ten dollars an hour. You mean to tell me I can't work for ten? And it was like it was like that. And I ended up getting a security job um, at at uh, at uh, at Tobacco Roadhouse, um, uh, that that little complex right there across the street from the Durham the Durham Baseball Park. And I worked security from eleven at night to seven in the morning, and then I would train from seven thirty to nine thirty in this rundown old gym off of Miami Boulevard. Uh, um, and it was like an old school, like Rocky gym, right? It was like none of the new age equipment. It was like a bunch of stuff that nobody wanted. Like this dude took it and made it to the gym. And it was just like a bunch of old guys. And it was bad. It was bad, but that's all I could afford. It was like the membership was like, I don't even know what it was. It was like 75 cents a week. I don't even know what it was. But it was super cheap. Um, but I, it, it gave me a place to train. Um, and then I would work at a, at a, at a at North, what's that? What's the other mall in Durham? It's another mall in Durham that I was working at, the T-Mobile, like the retail T-Mobile store. Yeah, yeah. From from ten to three, uh, every day, just trying to make ends meet uh, and trying to, you know, do some survive. And I was just training, training, training every single day, hoping that you know a team would call, and it didn't. I ended up going to Canada. I ended up going to the CFL. Uh, I had a really good friend who played for the British Columbia Lions, and I ended up going to the CFL. 
And I always, at this time, and I'm sure it's changed over time, but at that time, um, in 2007, 2008, I always say, if you've been to, if you've been to Angus Barn to get a good steak and understand what a good steak tastes like, and then someone tries to feed you a steak from Chile. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that it's not, you know, you, whoever eats at Chile eats at Chili's. But once you've tasted a real good ribeye bone-in or wagyu or medium, you know, cooked meat, once you taste that, the chili steak just just doesn't do it for you. And that's what it was for me. It was like I was in the NFL and had all the perks of the NFL and, I mean, stuff down to the locker room, to the equipment, to you can go and get, you know, cleats and gloves at your leisure, to now going to the CFL and you're like, you're like in some high school gym trying to, you know, I'm like, hey, why did the glove from it? Like, if you don't have your own glove, you only get one pair of gloves from the from the equipment people. So it was like the facilities and everything, the way they travel, everything was just so different. I was just like, oh my goodness. And it was, you know, I kind of got cut a raw deal where um, I had my contract, but another one of the players that was there who is a, who I, I, I get it, I understand the name is G-Roy Simon. He's a, he's a Hall of Fame receiver in the CFL, but he wanted more money, like like most superstars do. And they wanted me to take a pay cut in order to pay for him. And I, it was the whole, hey, you take a pay cut now, we'll get you on the back end later. And I'm like, I'm no fool. I know how this works. I take a pay cut now. When it comes time for you to take care of me, you'll cut me, and then I'll just be SOL. And so I said, no, I'm not taking a pay cut. And I ended up, uh, I ended up getting released. And they sent me home. <laughs> they sent, I got cut, and they sent me home in the worst way possible. The worst way possible. I took a bus. This is no lie. I took a bus <laughs> from British Columbia, Canada, which is like the, the, uh, like the northern – western part right think about seattle and like go seattle washington and then go up right that's british columbia uh on the map so i took a bus from this middle of nowhere place it was like a like a tackle box shop and i'm telling you i saw wolves in the distance i'm like i'm gonna die out here in this wilderness these wolves are gonna come and eat. i took a bus from there to seattle um spent like because when you take a bus you have to stop at uh, at the border and that customs and all that kind of stuff. So everybody has to get off the bus. They have to check everybody's bag that's on the bus, then load us all back on the bus. So the drive was like three, four hours, I believe it was. And then the check was like another three, four hours to only get to the airport and realize that my flight, which was like a red eye, I, you know, I get there, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm like, so I got to sit in the airport till 1130 then my, my flight went from Seattle to Chicago, from Chicago to Phoenix, from Phoenix. Then I got to RDU in, 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 in North Carolina. I spent 24 hours in airports. Yeah, bouncing all. I was like, this is the worst possible <laughs> happen. And then, um, you know, I was blessed. Uh, God sent an angel and said, hey, I'm going to make this show called Fourth and Long with Michael Irvin. And, and that happened. And the rest is history. That's crazy. And and as we talked about, Jesse and I, we'll, we will unpack that another day because that, that we could spend a whole show yeah. just talking about fourth and long. And uh, just to go ahead and start from Jesse now, that is his Twitter handle. Make sure you are following him on Twitter. He is a great follow. Hilarious to be on there. And so uh, the Tar Heels had the Tar Heels basketball team had a huge weekend in Fort Worth in the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. Jesse and I were both in the building. What was the experience like? We're going to talk about it in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about Run Your Pool. So your bracket's busted, huh? Well, you and everyone else, great news. But don't worry because we at Locked On believe in second chances. And so do our friends at Run Your Pool. Round up your friends who, you know, the ones who picked Baylor, <laughs> nobody on this show picked Baylor, or Kentucky, or any other high seed to win it all, and start over with a sweet 16 pool at runyourpool.com slash locked on. Along with sweet 16 brackets, Run Your Pool offers squares pools, yes, like the Super Bowl, to keep things interesting every week of the tournament. Brackets bust, but the fun doesn't have to stop. 
They have options to help you edit score, and they offer more intel to help you make your picks. All that stuff that you won't find at the big media bracket sites. So if you're looking to expand your horizons, Run Your Pull also has games for just about other every other sport, including NBA, golf, MLB, and even the Oscars coming up on Sunday. And once the madness ends, it'd be great for you to try something new. Plus, they offer full white glove customer support, custom branding, and one of the easiest three-minute setups you'll ever find. And clearly, as we always say, we believe in Run Your Pool because we've run Survivor and Bracket contests like this year's ourselves, and there's nothing better than a satisfied customer. So start your second chance, Sweet 16 Pool, and more at runyourpool.com slash locked on. Again, that's runyourpool.com slash locked on. I also want to tell you about Stat Hero. Stat Hero's NCAA single game pick'em pits the star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy sports and sports gambling. So you can take control back from those handicappers that always seem to have the advantage. And instead, start focusing on the players that you know and you can do that with the gameplay that doesn't rely on big spreads or long odds or these funky props. Stat Hero gives you the advantage, which results in gamers winning four times more often. And why is that? Because Stat Hero removes the mystery about who or what you're going up against. So, in addition to these pick 'em games, Stat Hero also has dozens of lineups you can comb through to pick against, and then you pick your lineup, and boom, you go head to head. It's easy, it's a fast way to get involved with all of your daily fantasy desires. Simple sleek gameplay, it's going to have up and running in no time. That's what Daily Fantasy was meant to be. So sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on. And if you use promo code locked on, you're going to get a 100% deposit. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we are here on the Locked on Tar Heels podcast today talking with Jesse Holly, North Carolina football and basketball player, former Dallas Cowboy, still lives in the Dallas area. He is here with us. We are now going to move to talking about uh, the first weekend of the 2022 NCAA tournament. The Tar Heels knocked off ninth-seeded Marquette and then beat the defending national champion Baylor Bears. Jesse was in the arena sitting right there by Coach Williams. And, and Jesse, that's where I want to start. Uh, from my vantage point, there was a unending line of people trying to come talk to Coach Williams, take pictures. You're just over there trying to watch a basketball game. What was that whole experience like? I, I, I do have to say this though, Isaac, you, you, you missed you missed a great lead in. Like you got a national champion, Jesse Holly. Like there, there's <laughs> there's there's a reason why we're here. National champion. You can't forget about that part. I am a national champion. Uh, but no, it, it was uh, it it was. One, it was great to see Coach. I hadn't seen Coach. Uh, I spoke to him, but I hadn't physically seen him since uh, he decided to uh, to retire. And, you know, just talking to him, you know, you can still tell he loves the game. And, uh, it, you know, people thought, you know, it, he, he, was he sick? Was he this? Was he that? And he, he just felt like he couldn't reach the new age player. And that's why he stepped away. It was it was more so, uh, you know, when, when my message, when I feel like my message doesn't get across, um, that's when he said, you know, I, I had to hand it over to someone else because it's not about me. And coach has always been about that. It's, it's not about me. It's about the program. It's about the name on the front of the jersey. And so if I'm not helping the name on the front of the jersey, none of, none of it matters uh, because that's what I do it for. That's who I do it for. And so that's why, you know, one of the reasons why he kind of stepped away and, uh, you know, got a chance to talk to him. And, and it was great. And, and, I, and, and, and I love coach because he is – one of the most giving people that you'll know, but it, it's if you notice, there's a hard and fast rule: timeouts, end of quarters or halves, or, or there's a break in the action. I'll take a picture. I'll even chat it with you for a second. When the game is going on, do not <laughs> do not ask for a picture. Do not ask for an autograph. Do not ask for a conversation. Do not ask for any of that. <laughs> and so, and he understands. Like he, coach understands who he is. Like he understands he is Roy Williams. He, he, he's not oblivious to that and, and gets upset because people want to come and take pictures with him. He understands, you know, could he have been in a box? Yes, he could have been in a box. He didn't want to be in a box. He's like, don't, I don't know. Don't sit me in a box. Put me in the stands. I want to be in the stands. I want to be in the action. I'm, I'm not a box guy. I'm, I'm, I'm in the action type guy. And he understands that and he knows it. And so you saw the lines of people who wanted to come take a picture, shake his hand, tell him, you know, what, 
you know, I, I couldn't tell you like how many people came and said, Hey, here's what you meant to me. You know, I, I started watching Carolina basketball with my dad and, you know, uh, I went to Carolina and, you know, I drove all this way just to shake your hand. I want to thank you for all the, ch I mean, just the countless amount of compliments that he received uh, from people from, and then there were also Kansas folks that were there. So there were people from Kansas that were coming up to him and saying, coach, man, uh, you know, we love you. You know, we miss you, uh, you know, and, and, and everything. And so it, it, he understands that part of the job or the former job. Uh, and he, he welcomes it. You just can't do it while the action is happening. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Man, what a guy. What a, what a special person. He is so great. He is part of the Carolina family. And we're going to talk more about uh, your experiences on his basketball teams as we keep going. But before we get there. I do want to touch on these two games, Carolina and on Thursday. These 8-9 matchups are essentially toss-ups, and then the Tar Heels go out and spring the biggest margin of victory ever in the NCAA tournament in an 8-9 game. What did you see unfold? You know, I, I go back to, and I'm not saying this to say this because I'm a, I'm a Tar Heel, but when, the, when, when Carolina beat Duke in, in, the, in the, 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 we call it the home-going service, for Coach K, <laughs> I, I saw a different team. I saw I saw it start to come together. I started seeing, um, you know, how it would look. And as a person who understands the game, knows the game, played the game, and what you're looking for from a team at that juncture of the season. And then when you came into it, it was all about, all right, will this team come out and be able to adjust and adapt to the environment? Um different courts, traveling, it's the NCAA tournament, like all those nerves and stuff like that. And when I saw the way they came out against uh, Marquette, I said it translated. What happened at the end of the season with uh, with Duke and then watching them in the NCAA, uh, in, the, in the ACC tournament, and it wasn't that, you know, we, we couldn't have won the NCAA tournament, but you saw a lot of fatigue in those guys when you have to play them, you know, that many games in the days in a row. Um, but you still saw what you needed to see. It said this team is a team that, when rested, they they put they put it together. They 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 bought into the system. They bought into it defensively. They bought into it mentally. And when I saw them do that to Marquette, I got super. I'm like, this is the kind of momentum you want to have heading into this tournament. It's a vibe in advance. And I was like, they get it. They understand it. And they're playing with the level of confidence that I hadn't seen them play with all year long. You know, and, and, you know, RJ and, and Leakey and Caleb and, 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 and Manic and, and, you know, all those guys are going to be who they are and, and Mondo. But you just saw them play with a different level of confidence. And, of course, like NBA playoffs, the NCAA tournament, when you get into that tournament, unless there's an extreme foul trouble or our situation, we foul a guy out, we get a guy ejected, you don't start going deep into your bench. You just don't. You just don't. Like your, your, your rotation tightens up. To about a six, seven man rotation. And I, and I just felt really strongly about the guy that we have. And I knew that this, this tournament is always a guard based tournament. The NCAA is a guard based tournament. Whoever has the most experienced guards and who guards play the best in those moments, nine times out of 10 are the ones who walk away with the national championship. And I'm like, I, you could put Leaky Black on any person in the country. From from a point guard to a small you know to a small four, and you know, he, Leaky's the kind of guy where a coach doesn't once he gives an assignment to Leaky, he can lay his head out of night in a pillow and not worry about it anymore because that's going to be done. And RJ just controlling the you know controlling the rock, and then Caleb playing as well as he's been playing offensively. I think when Caleb gets his offensive game going, he becomes a much better defensive player. And when you have that happening, and then Brady doing what he does. You have the guard play and the wing play to, to, to kind of go up against anybody because you have answers for every question that a team may throw at you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, one of the teams that has had phenomenal guard play that you just spoke about is the defending national champion Baylor Bears, who graduated several of those dynamic guards who defend the same way Leakey can. But Carolina was able to knock them off on Saturday in probably the most roller coaster of a game I've ever seen live and in person. Just to, as a former player who's watching it from the stands, who knows what it takes uh, to get there, what, what are you experiencing in that game against Baylor on Saturday? I, I'm, same thing everyone else was feeling. 
there was there was a wave of emotions. Uh, there's jubilation and excitement and high fiving when you're up 25, and then there's sweating and hard breathing when you're down 10, and then there's like pulling your hair out and like your palms are sweaty when the game's going into overtime, and you're you know you're you're trying to call out plays and you're trying to coach from the stands and you know so everything that everyone else felt we feel like I felt you know I, like I said I, I was. I was high fiving and I'm. I got friends that went to Baylor and I'm like I'm texting them and I'm talking trash and I'm on Twitter talking trash, and then the, the lead dwindles down. I'm just like, uh oh, you know. And I was like, okay, we got it. And I'm watching the clock and I'm watching the game. I'm like, why is that clock not moving fast? Why is that time moving so slow? And I'm watching the clock and I'm watching the game. I'm like, let's go. I'm like, Mondo, make these free throws. And I'm like, no, don't go that play. And then they go to overtime. But I, I will say, once they went into overtime, I I, I knew. I, I did. I knew that we were going to win that game because I know when you have to climb that deficit mountain and 25 points is a long way to go, I just knew that we 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 had taken everything that they had and they had no more left. And, and so we needed to make a play or two in, in overtime, and that would seal the deal. And we did it. Uh, RJ made a huge play uh, with the and one. Um, and just I, I knew that was that was the straw that broke the camel's back right there. They, they didn't have anything left. Legs were tired. And when you go into overtime and you've been playing so hard and fighting back so hard, you just don't have that that lift, that jump, that push that you need to kind of get yourself over the hump. And we had one more. We had one more. We had we had one or two more players better than them. And again, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to surviving advance, having good guard play. RJ played lights out, a 30 point game uh, from him. Uh, it is, is it was is one of the games that you look at and you say this is one of the best games that we've seen in the tournament uh, so far from two from two powerhouses. I remember leaning over to Coach Williams, and I said to you know I said to Coach Williams and he agreed with me. I said this isn't an upset. Like North Carolina beating Baylor isn't an upset. It isn't. I'm like we are the University of North Carolina basketball. We've been we've been doing this and hanging banners since the Baylor Bears have been the Waco Cubs. Like we do this. So when we beat a number one team like Baylor, it's not an upset to us. It's, it's not. It's, there shouldn't be a shock or this huge wave. Like we are, it's a shock when St. Peter's beat Kentucky, right? That's the shock. That that is the we're in North Carolina. This isn't a, this isn't like some you didn't we're, we're not some poor program who's just happy to be here. We are the University of North Carolina basketball. We do this. So when we when we beat them, I was just like, all right, on to the next one. And that next one is going to be UCLA coming up on Friday. Both the men's and women's teams are moving on to the Sweet 16. What's what's the experience like of moving on to the second weekend? Jesse, national champion, as we talked yeah. about, uh, has lived that life. And so we're going to talk about it more in just a second. But before we get there, I want to tell you about Built Bar. Built Bars are great candy bar replacement options covered in 100% real chocolate. Some of the great flavors now include mint brownie, coconut almond and new is white chocolate shamrock these flavors are all delicious and built bars coming out with new things all the time not really sure how they do it but they make all these bars taste good and they go back and make sure that they are healthy for you too and they pull it off every time typical candy bars have anywhere between two to three hundred calories but built bars are checking in at just 130 so they contain just those calories, f only four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So go to build.com and use promo code LOCKED and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, on Locked on Tar Heels today, we are here with national champion Jesse Holly joining me on today's show, and uh, we're going to move now to talking about the Sweet 16. Jesse, in the 04-05 season, lived through an entire tournament run all the way to the national championship against Illinois. Before that, he was part of Coach Williams' first team in Chapel Hill, 03-04. 
That year, the Tar Heels returned to the NCAA tournament, beat Air Force, then lost the heartbreaker to Texas in the second round. Came back the next year, ran through Oakland, Iowa State, a close one with Villanova, Wisconsin, and then Michigan State in the national semifinal before that championship game. So, uh, Jesse, you had the opportunity, you played in those first two games towards the end, but then also you were able to get in in that final four game against Michigan State. What is it like to step up onto the court in the final four? <laughs> it is, um, it's amazing. It, it's amazing because it's like there isn't a like outside of the Super Bowl, there isn't a bigger game on TV than the Final Four. Like literally, nothing rivals except the Super Bowl than the Final Four. Everyone's watching. Brackets are busted. You know, the all eyes are on you. You look in the stands, and that particular like that particular run. I mean all the stars of coming out like you know there was Nelly and Lil Wayne and Jay-Z and Michael Jordan and and then you know all of the greats were there and, and you you know you see an Antoine Jameson and it's I mean you 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 who the who's who of, of, of who's who are at these games and so to be able to be in on that moment you know that that's a legacy moment those are moments where you tell your kids, 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 you know, yeah, your great, great grandfather was, you know, a national champion and he played in the national championship game and in the final four and stuff like that. And so, I mean, it, it is a, it is a, it's a, it's a great moment. It's a great feeling to have. And, uh, and, 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 you know, being with coach, when we were here in Fort Worth, uh, we were reliving some of those, we were reliving some of those moments, you know, and, and I remember him saying one time, he goes, uh, you know, now would be a good time to have a guy like Raymond Felton, who was in attendance on Thursday night. He was like, you know, we don't have to worry about a press break with Raymond. Get him the ball, and the rest of y'all get the hell out of his way. You know, <laughs> so, having moments like that, and then being with all your teammates through that time, those are the things that you just you take with you forever. You, those are memories. That, that's what makes being a part of the Carolina family so unique because you have these moments to share. Think about there are schools who don't go to final fours who don't go to national championships just not that they don't want to but you know they just don't they don't ever get there and so they'll never have these experiences they'll never be able to say remember that time we played michigan state or illinois or villanova or you know whatever it is because they just don't and but for, for you to be a part of that and to have a a, um, a, a place in it that 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 leaves you in, in, a, in a special place in everyone's mind you know if 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 it's it's indescribable. Man, that's so good. And so these players that are going through it now that are, are getting ready to leave for Philadelphia, head up, take on UCLA, what just help us who have never understand a little bit of, of the pressure, the the expectations, the emotions that goes on inside a, a young man who's eighteen to twenty two years old who has to step into that environment. The, the, the fun part about it is these guys have the experience. And what I mean by that is it goes back to what I said earlier. You wear that North Carolina, from, you know, that, that Carolina, North Carolina on your chest. Every game's a big game because everyone wants to knock you off. You're, you, this is when you, when you play your, you know, when, we, when I was back playing, when we're playing the St. Mary's of the world, when we're playing the, you know, the, the, the Tulsa's of the world. Like these teams look at us and they're saying, if we beat North Carolina, that's our season. We're good. We're 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 good. We beat North Carolina. We're fine. So and and you know you think about guys like you know Armando. Armando's been the man since being the man was a thing, right? Like so the pressure for him is is no. I've been doing this, and and for RJ and for Leaky and for Caleb, all these guys in their respective places and cities and towns and districts and areas, uh, they were the guy. And when you come to North Carolina, you understand what you're walking into. You know that this is going to be, there's a standard that is uh, that needs to be maintained, that should be maintained, that you want to maintain. But that that's just the level of what it is of being a North Carolina Tar Heel, especially when you talk about going on the hardwood. So for these guys, it's basketball. It's basketball for these guys. Yes, you, there's pressure because you want to win, and there is no there is no tomorrow. You lose, or you go home. Um, but the sense of nervousness, yes, there's a little nervousness because the game is so big. But once the ball is tipped, 
it's still basketball. The ball is still the ball. The rim is still the rim. And I know that I need to take this round ball and put it in that round hoop for us to score <laughs> points. And at the end of the day, we need to have one more point than the rest of these guys. Um, but it's 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 fun. Like that's the part that people miss us as fans. We we get nervous um, because we don't control what we can, you know we don't control any of it, right? We're sitting in the stands and and, and I'm I'm with three time national champion Hall of Fame coach Roy Williams and he's he's losing it because he can't control any of it. He can't make a call. He can't make a timeout. He can't make an adjustment. He can't none of that. You know I'm 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 behind you know ten year vet Camille Little in the WNBA. And she's doing the same thing. I'm, I'm sitting next to Raymond Felton. He's NBA, uh, you know, 10 plus years in the, in the NBA. And it's the same thing. And it's like we just – we as fans can't control it, so we have that level of nervousness. But those guys who are out there on the court, they're lo- they're losing themselves in the moment and just having fun with it. At least they should be having fun with it. Yeah. Whew. And and you got to experience that fun. You, you just talked about you and Coach Williams and Raymond as part of that 05 national championship team. Jesse, what's your favorite memory from that run? You know, the favorite memory had – there's two. There, 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 there's two um, that I remember from that run. Um, one of them has to do – has nothing to do with actual on-court stuff. Um, of course, the Villanova game was, was a very fun game. Um, and, again, if you're, if you're a Villanova alum, you're going to say that he didn't travel. If you're a North Carolina alum, you're going to say, right call, ref. He did travel. It, it all depends on where you stand at right now, you know, depending on what side of the ball you're standing on. But um, that was a fun game for me because, you know, Randy Foy, who's from Newark, New Jersey, I played against Randy Foy. Mike Nardi, who was the point guard, was my be- was one of my best friends. He and I shared a backcourt together in AAU ball since we were 14 years old. So, you know, to have experiences like that. But there, there was a moment, uh, if you go back, we lost in the ACC tournament. This was the year the ACC tournament was in D.C. We lost to Georgia Tech, I believe. Jared, uh, Jared Jack and that crew, uh, and I think Jared Jack had like 35. Like he that went off. right. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he just went off. Um, but I remember we flew into town, but we didn't fly home. Coach was so upset. He was so angry. Because we just wouldn't buy into defensive sets. We had just beat Duke uh, on Marvin Williams' last second shot to win the regular season ACC. So we kind of felt accomplished. We felt like, well, we've been through the ACC when the ACC was like, you know, you had a lot of tough teams in. And we were tired. We were tired. The season was long. And we didn't really buy into the ACC tournament. Um, and that, that, that made Coach really mad. And so we ended up taking a bus ride from D.C., back to North Carolina. We took the bus. Like He was like, go back to your rooms, get your stuff. You better be down there in an hour or two. If you're not down there, you're getting left. Like He was like <laughs> upset. We got like Wendy's on the way home. Like we don't eat like that. Like we're, like we're normally like first class all the way. Steakhouses, like coach, like we're, that's one thing about Carolina. It's first class all the way. But that night you had, you know, Sean May is 16, you know, all, I, I, I can eat two whole pizzas by myself. It was like, you got $10 at the, at, at the Wendy's. Get it and let's go. <laughs> and I remember us getting back to Chapel Hill. Um, it had to be 3, 4, or 5 o'clock in the morning. It was the wee hours in the morning. And, like, we're all waking up. And it's like, oh, man, we're about to go back to our dorm rooms. And, like, Coach stands up in the bus and he says, your practice game would be in your locker. Be on the court in 20 minutes. And I would not be late if I were you. And we're like, What? At like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., it was like the sun wasn't even up yet. And I remember we going in and getting dressed and coming on a practice, and we practiced for like three hours, never touched a basketball. And it was just like defensive drills. You don't communicate, on the line, 33s. Oh, you're not in the right spot, on the line, 33. And it was like you guys will buy into this because we're too, we're too good of a team not to, and we didn't display that in the ACC tournament. Uh, and we need to get ready for the NCAA tournament. And that was like the like the like, like the fire that kind of he lit uh, under that team. And we just went on a we went on a tear. We went on a tear uh, throughout that tournament. You know, we had we had some trouble with Villanova. That's when Villanova was running. You know, the first time you saw four guards and one big man. That's right. That's right. 
seven, six foot eight, and they would just spread you out wide and just let you know Allen Ray and Randy Floyd just take you off the dribble. That was a you know, and but other than that, we was we just ran through it. So I remember that moment getting us there. But all the other moments, man, was the hotel rooms, uh, the, the 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 fun times that we had in practices, the bus rides. I mean, we had such a great time, man, and. When we won the national championship, uh, we came back to campus and coach was very adamant about, listen, you don't want to miss class. Like if you miss class and you think this is going to be the easy way to go, trust me, I will be checking. And we were rock stars to the point where teachers were like professors were writing notes to coach like, hey, can you not have the guys come to class for like the next couple of days? Because they couldn't get anything accomplished. Because like literally you have like, T-shirts and basketballs and posters being passed over people and rolls back to the to the players and like you know you know it, it might be it might be Raymond and Sean in one class it might be Jawad and Dave I mean so it was just like rock stars and teacher was like we 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 can't get anything accomplished we can't get anything so let's just let this thing die down for a couple of days and then come back to class we won't hold it against you Bill because everybody's like hey we signed this we signed that for my dad for this for that for Christmas for next year and all that kind of stuff so it was. It was that memory of just having fun with the guys, man. That group was a fun group, and we laughed and we joked and we made fun of one another. But it was it was it was a family, and and I think that's what propelled us to to win that championship. And I remember the biggest thing Coach would say that literally annoyed him to no end all year long. That year was North Carolina and Illinois, right? Like. No, very few times do you start the beginning of the year with two teams and then you end the in you end the year with those same two teams that's like these are the two teams. That's right. That's right. What they kept saying about Illinois was Illinois was the most talented no Illinois was the most talented team. They were the best team. North Carolina was the most talented. And when I tell you that pissed off coach to no end <laughs> because he kept saying, Yes, we are talented. We're the University of North Carolina. But damn it, we are the best team. We are a team. We're, we're not just a collection of McDonald's All Americans, which we were, but but we're a team. And 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 that bothered him. And they would always say, Illinois, look at these guys, blue collar guys, and they're just a team. And you know, D Brown and Luther Head and and, and all these guys. And look at the team, 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 team. And Darren Williams, the team, team, team. And Carolina, boy, look at that talent. Rashad McCants, Ray Felton, Sean Main. You know, Sean Main will be Player of the Year and Raymond Felton to be the Bob Cousy Award winner. You got all these talented guys, and this is a talented team, and da-da-da-da-da. It was one, two, one, two all year long in, in the rankings. And coach would always say, We're a better team. We're a better team. We are the better team. We are the better team. So when we got that matchup and it was Illinois, he was like, We are the better team, and we will show them that we're the better team. Yes, we are talented, but so what? We will play like a team. And that was like that was like the driving point um, of it. And then at the end of every game, going back into that locker room, you know, and coach would come in doing his little shimmy. But we had this thing where in every locker room, and I don't even know if Coach Davis does it. Now they, they put it on, the, on the, the sticker on the board. But coach would have his white board, dry eraser board, and, you know, it starts and it would be a number 64. And then when we would come in, he would erase the number 64 and write 32. And then he erased that one, and then he write 16 and 8 and 4. And then the, the best moment was when we got back into that locker room. And we got a chance to erase that number, uh, you know, the the, the 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 number two, and write that big number one on dry eraser board, and we just erupted. It, it, it was it was a, like that's a moment that you'll never ever forget. Uh, uh, what's your team? Well, the 2022 Tar Heels are trying to accomplish that very same thing. Right now, the number on the dry erase board says 16. Jesse, you talked about how you really wanted to go to UCLA. Now you got a chance to knock off the Bruins. <laughs> Is Carolina going to be able to mark off 16 and write the number eight on Friday? I think they, I think they will. And UCLA is another good team who has a tremendous guard. Their point guard is one who controls the game. He gets everybody involved. He can score when he needs to score. But I, I just like the way that we're playing basketball right now. Um, and, and Coach David said it the other day in one of his, his press conferences. I don't know if it was pre or post game, um, but he said that there's three types of people: those who um, who don't want to fight, uh, those who will fight, and those who are looking for a fight. And I think we're the people who are looking for a fight. Um, and, and, and that type of mentality 
I think those guys are finally buying into that. They're finally buying into the, we're looking for a fight. There's, there's no more of you coming in doing what you want to us. We're bringing it to you. Uh, we're going to be physical. Um, we're going to be we're, we're going to be good at what we do. We're not going to be dirty, but we're going to be a physical basketball team. And then when it comes time for us to do what we got to do, we're going to be there to do it uh, no matter who's in front of us. So uh, I, I just love that mentality. I love that we're, we're, we're looking for a fight. And, and so uh, anything that's standing in our way from getting to New Orleans in the national championship, that you just you just entered yourself into a fight. And, and I hope that I hope that they're ready. Uh, I hope that UCLA is ready because I know that Coach Davis uh, will have the guys ready and, and, and I'll, I'll be there. Uh, tickets booked. Uh, tickets are already all right. I got the call already from. Uh, and, and this is the and I'll, I'll say this as, as a former player. This is the this is the funny part about um, this is where I love being a part of the Carolina family. But you have to understand like there is hierarchy in every family. Is every if any parent tells you, you know, they have multiple kids. Oh, I love all my kids the same. That parent's a liar. That parent's an absolute liar. Because in the words of Jimmy Johnson, uh, everyone gets treated fairly. Not everyone gets treated the same. It's it's just inevitable, right? And so uh, as we're getting closer and closer and closer to that national championship, uh, you know, shout out to my guy Eric Hoots, who's just you know. Uh, and, and and Becca Brinkley, who, who's you know Coach Davis's right hand woman, uh, handles all his stuff. So when, when the ticket requests start to go out, you have to understand where you rank at in the pantheon of of how this ticket thing is gonna go. Now, if you're Michael Jordan, your ticket request gets met at all means, any number that you want. Okay, we we get that, we understand that. Then it goes. When you look up in the Dean Smith Center and you go, hmm, those jerseys that are in the front that go National Player of the Year, their ticket order gets kind of requested. They, they get theirs done next. And then behind those players, there's like ACC Players of the Year. Those guys get the next wave of, of – of, so it's like where does your jersey fit at in the Raptors? If your jersey isn't in the Raptors, just know that you're going to come behind all those guys. And so for me – you know, I, I was a, I was a, I wasn't, I wasn't Raymond Felton. I wasn't Sean May. I was a part of the team. And if anybody tells you a part of that team, they'll tell you like, man, Jesse was a good reason why we went because the way that we played and practiced every single day, that, that matters. Uh, but when that ticket request come in, you know, I'm from New Jersey. I'm like, you know, Hooch calls me and he's like, Hey, you know, ticket requested or not. I'm like, uh, like I need three. He's like, ah, I don't know if I can get you three. Uh, a lot of people trying to come in. And I know what that means. I get it. I understand it. I'm not offended by it. I just know that Jesse Holly, while I'm a part of this family, that I don't get the big piece of chicken. I just don't. Like I, I don't get the big piece of chicken. I'm gonna get a piece of chicken. I'm not getting the big piece. I'm not getting the Michael Jordan piece. I'm not getting the Tyler Hansborough piece. I'm not getting. You're getting you know, the, that chili steak you talked about earlier. I'm, That's what yeah, you're getting. I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get burnt ends. That's what I'm gonna get. I'm still gonna get fed, and burnt ends are good if you understand barbecue, but. <laughs> I may not get I may not get the wagyu piece. I may not get the Japanese wagyu piece of steak because Michael Jordan's around, right? Tyler Hansborough's around. There's some other guys who who who's who's pretty prominent in this program. But the thing is, is that they make sure I'm taken care of. I don't have to worry about not being in attendance. Now I may not be able to have myself and more friends in attendance with me, but I'm going to be taken care of. And, and, and one thing I'll say as we as we close this about how our program is run, I think this is so important. Um, and I was reminded of it this past weekend with being around Coach Williams. If you noticed where Coach Williams was sitting, it's not by accident. This is Coach Williams. This is three-time national champion. This is Hall of Fame coach. This is, this is Roy Williams. Roy Williams sitting 12, 13 rows back. Great seats. This is Roy Williams. You would think Roy Williams sits courtside. You would think Roy Williams has the best of the best. But what I love about being in the Carolina family, and this goes back all the way to Coach Smith, coaches' families never sat in front of the players' families. That was that way when Coach Smith was here. It was that way when Coach Williams was the head coach. If you go back and watch any of the games, when his family came and Miss Wanda was at every single game, she never sat in front of our families. Never. 
never said in front of our families. And so coach embodies that same mentality now. He goes, yeah, I get, I know who I am, but we don't sit in front of players' families. And so, yes, I'll take my seat. And if you remember on Thursday, who sat behind coach? Randy Randy was sitting behind coach. And coach was upset because he Mm -hmm. said, we have to change the seats. I don't sit in front of players. And so we'll sit in the same row, but these guys are the reason the program is what the program is. I get a chance to coach these talented guys and their families uh, to be a part of this program. And that's what he's always been about. That's the Carolina family. That is the way that it goes. This is Roy Williams who could have had any seat that he wanted in that building. And even when he comes to home games now, in the Dean E. Smith Center, on the Roy Williams court, can have any seat that he wants. Doesn't sit in front of players' families. And so that's the Carolina family. I, I think that sometimes, I don't. I didn't want that to be missed. I want people to understand the kind of person he is, the kind of program we are, the kind of family we are. And and, and they didn't pretend they said, well, coach, and, and coach is not superstitious, but he's superstitious. So after we won, they're like, but we won. So he's like, dang it, now I got to sit in that same seat because we won. Uh, but if you notice, he doesn't he doesn't sit in front of families. He doesn't that is that is that is the Carolina way. The Carolina way is that coaches' families sit behind players' families. And we give them the respect and the honor of saying, your kid is here, and your kid is, is the reason why we have jobs. And while we while we can say that we're the North we're the University of North Carolina, and that's like I said, that goes all the way back to Coach Smith. And even today, you know, in his retirement, he's still like I don't sit in front of families. That's just the way it is. So that that's the Carolina way. That's the Carolina family for you right there. Love that. It's a legacy that carries on today. Coach Hubert Davis is trying to get his way out of the way and let the players shine through as well. Jesse Holly, national champion, thank you so much for joining us today on thank the you. Locked on Tar Heels podcast. Where can we find you? What do you what do you have going on right now? And then we'll yeah, get you out so- of here. You know, while basketball was my first love, football for a long time, and it's still paying all of the bills. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, I'm still here locally uh, after my time with the Cowboys. Uh, I came back and I, I lived here since 2009 with a brief stint and going to New England and coming back. But I do a daily podcast on DallasCowboys.com called Hanging with the Boys. Uh, I got three-time Super Bowl champion Nate Newton on that podcast. Uh, with me. You can find that on DallasCowboys.com or if you're on Twitter, it's uh, at HWTB uh, on Twitter. Um, I also do the pre and post game show for the Dallas Cowboys for a company called A, the letter A, T-O, two, Z, A to Z Sports Dallas. Uh, And so you can find me on all platforms uh, when the season comes back around doing the pre and post game show for the Cowboys. So there are Tar Heel Cowboy fans that's where you can find me at uh, doing the pregame and postgame show and halftime show uh, for that. And then also um, I, I want to plug my charity, um, Holly's Help at Hands. Um, and we do a lot of different things throughout the community throughout the year. But our, our big event is our Christmas event. Uh, as, a, as a kid who was raised by his grandmother in a single family home who made less than $30,000 a year, uh, Christmas was a tough time for us. And while I can't give every single kid in the country a, a Christmas that they can remember, I can give some. And I was always taught if you can change the life of one person, you can change the life of thousands of people. That's what legacy is. And so Holly's helping hands I me. Mean, we always try to make sure that we're doing the best that we can during those holiday seasons. We understand it's a tough time for not only the parents, but also the kids. And, and, and you know, we, we live in a day and time now where talk about uh, kids being a little bit mean. They are mean. They are mean. Uh, So when you come back to school and you have the same clothes that you left school with before the Christmas break, when you come back, kids will let you know about it and they will definitely have jokes for you. Uh, But we just want to make sure kids feel good around the holiday season. They didn't ask to be in those situations and scenarios. So we try to make sure that we can do the best that we can to give them something uh, around the holiday season. And uh, uh, if you go to my, uh, to my Twitter at Mr. Fourth and long, um, there's a link in the bio to donate uh, for that. And like I said, we do a lot of different stuff. Uh, last year when we had the big freeze here in uh, mm-hmm. in, in Texas, um, I, I put over 300 people in hotel rooms. 
uh, wow. from that, from that, from that, from that space. And I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I just did it. And, and people began to donate and the Lord blessed me. And it was, was like, Hey, just, you know, we put over 50 families, uh, in hotels, over 300 people, uh, in a safe place to give them a shower, some, uh, some food, a warm place to, to stay when they didn't have any power. We didn't have any power here, uh, in Texas and it was freezing cold. So yeah, that's what I'm doing, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm connected to sports. And now if you see me in Philly, cause I'll be in Philly, uh, Come holler at me, man. I'll, um, you know, chest bump, fist bump. Play the pitch. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for that. But I'm like, coach, just don't talk to me while the game is going on in live That's action. Right. Out, That's right. Uh, Stoppers and breaks, halftime. I'm all for it. Uh, if you see me at the urinal, please do not talk to me at the urinal. We'll <laughs> to have a conversation in a certain space where I like to kind of just keep my little privacy and my distance from you and the urinal is one of them. <laughs> That's great. So Tar Heels fans, if you're heading up to Philly, make sure you go say hi to Jesse at the appropriate time and definitely yes. not in the bathroom and definitely wash your hands first. Please. We will, Please. all everything Jesse just talked about, all his podcast, his charity, we're going to link to all of that in the show notes. So make sure you check that out. Donate to Holly's Helping Hands. That would be a great way to help continue to grow the Dallas metro area. Jesse, thank you for the work you're doing there to help the people of Dallas. Really appreciate that. All right. This has been our interview today on Locked on Tar Heels with national champion, Jesse Holly. Go Heels. Go Heels. Well, that's it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Please go subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. Or if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe there. Real easy. Just hit the button. We'd love for you to be able to catch all these episodes, all these great interviews. We had Miss Carla Black yesterday, Jesse today, tomorrow. We're going to be looking ahead to what's coming up this weekend in the Sweet 16 and anything that might be coming beyond. Look around the rest of the NCAA tournament as well and see all that action. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on heels you can follow me at isaac shade you can see my name just right there below and how to spell if you want to talk more or have suggestions for other inner please send the show an email locked on tar heels at gmail.com and please if you wouldn't mind just take a minute quick and easy go and rate and review the show especially if you're listening on apple Podcasts. it's a great way the shows reach and bring more people into all these conversations Thank you so much for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen every single day. And now let me encourage you to make Locked on NFL Draft your second listen. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Hey, thank you so much for spending part of your Thursday hanging out with me, hanging out with Jesse, talking to us about all this great stuff that's going on. It is the most wonderful time of the year, and it's a great day to be a Tar Heel. Until tomorrow, peace! Peace!